A few days ago, I was watching TV with the Destroyer of Worlds. And it got me thinking, what does she actually think TV is? If you could build a little universal translator for kitten brains, what would come out? Yeah, so that's Catelyn Stark, and she's married to Ned Stark, and... Which one is Legolas again? No, he's in Lord... For fuck's sake! And that got me thinking, well, even if she spoke perfect English, she still couldn't make sense of TV, because she doesn't know what TV is, or fiction, or sword fights, or cheeky feudal incest. And she never will. There's an upper limit to the intelligence of her species. And there must be an upper limit to our intelligence, too, to the human species. Let's call it the understanding line. Imagine it, right? The cat has an understanding line somewhere. And before that line, she understands food, and litter trays, and mice, and how to wake her owner up at three in the morning to party because she's a little cunt. But what about over that line? What about the stuff she can never understand? Well, basic requests. That's one. Cattington, fetch me my breakfast opium, would you? NOW, Cattington! As well as Portuguese, jam sandwiches, particle physics, and hooters. And she won't ever understand these things. She can't. The limit, her understanding line, is built into her adorable, but somewhat lacking brain. Well, what about us? All of the collective brains of everyone who has ever lived adds up and pushes our understanding line to here, which is where we are now, in this century. And thanks to all of that, we have civilization and Keynesian economics and butt stuff. And we'll keep making geniuses and we'll keep pushing the line in an attempt to understand nature. But can it go on forever? until we've licked everything. Well, maybe not. At some point, the size of our brains might limit us in what we can understand, and the line can't be pushed anymore. We can't go further than that <coughs> without AI, and the problem is that we can't even imagine what's over that line by definition. So there must be two types of truth, stuff we don't understand yet but can, and stuff we don't understand yet and never can. This is Bulgarian. If you can't read Cyrillic, it might look a bit like silliness. However, it's pronounced roughly Tiprostlisibe, which means, Hey chum, how's it going? Make sure you say this to any Bulgarians you meet, and you are certain to make only the best of first impressions. There you go, you can read a bit of Cyrillic. We went from no understanding to understanding in about 15 seconds. Because you're a human, and humans are like well clever. But what about the things we might never understand? Is there a system after maths, for example, that better describes the universe? Is there some grand structure to creation that we just can't discern? What are women doing when they all go off to the loo at the same time, exactly? What the fuck is that all about? The solutions to quantum gravity and faster than light travel might be staring us in the face, and we just can't quite grab them, because we're too dopey. Not because we don't understand yet, but because we might never understand. Because, monkey brains. If the cat was a bit smarter, she would understand that right in front of her is an epic story of betrayal and death and certain weddings gone a bit uh-oh. But for her, it's just flashy lights and weird sounds because she's too silly. Is it the same for us with reality? Are we missing something really obvious because we're just too dumb? What do these do exactly? And these? And what's the point of this? What if there is some grand function to the cosmos, like a massive computer or an elaborate toy for baby gods or something, and we're just sat on our bluey green spaceship with our thumbs up our asses, missing the point entirely? Because of this line. How much information do we already have that if we just interpreted in the right way, we could solve physics, kill war, and just become better humans? But we keep missing because of this line. And how many stupid decisions are we repeating over and over again in our lives in the same dumb patterns of behaviour that we kinda notice but refuse to change because of this fucking line? But hang on, there is a nice twist to this. Yes, we are limited, but think for a second how far we've come already with those limits. How much we've invented and discovered with outdated, stupid, prehistoric brains that were mostly good for foraging and working out who was boning who. Why is there such a gap between animal intelligence and humans? Why was evolution so lovely to us? And what will we discover when the next Einstein or Newton is born? Can we ever push the understanding line right to the very edge, to see space and time, and cause and effect, and good and evil, and quarks and galaxies for what they really are in themselves? If we can't, that's no surprise. And if we can, well, what a thing that would be. But right now, in this silly century, with these silly brains, we can only do our best. And that's gone pretty well so far. Brains that were really only designed for survival and mating, later went on to discover the Higgs boson and DNA. One day, we might push it further and get to the stars, or whatever else is waiting out there, boldly nudging the understanding line just a little further, risk by risk, idea by idea. Maybe until we've unmasked the whole of reality for what she really is. It won't be us who get to do that, but our descendants, and it will only be possible because of all the humans who came before, because of us. 
And just as we stood on our ancestors' shoulders to reach over our heads, they'll stand on ours and travel God knows where and discover God knows what. It couldn't have been done without us, but it will be done without us. All of the research and thinking our species is doing today will vitally contribute to whatever comes next, to wherever we go next, to hopefully that day when there's no gap left between our models of the world and the world itself, when we push the understanding line to its very limits and reality stops being weird sounds and flashing lights and maybe makes itself known for what it really is. That would be cool. That would be a treat. One day. Maybe. Yeah, who's a good girl, huh? I will bite off your eyelids and wear them like a little fucking hat. What? What? I said isn't fish yummy yummy.